Welcome back to episode 20 of the Charged Up Show. In this episode, we were able to have an amazing conversation with Justin Auger. Justin has had a great hockey career so far, growing up in the KW, then being drafted into the OHL, playing for the Guelph Storm, and eventually playing pro with the chance to play a couple of games in the NHL with the LA Kings. Before we go any further, this episode was brought to you by 519 Tech Services, a tech repair company located in Elmira, Ontario. 519 Tech Services offers f- affordable repairs for all phones and tablets, including iPhones, iPads, and Samsungs, and more. They offer screen and battery replacements, home button repairs, camera repairs, etc. All repairs come with a six month warranty, and when you go in to get your tech repaired, if you mention charged up, you'll receive 10% off the price of your repair. If you have any more questions, you can contact the owner Peter at 226 444. 9927 or visit their website at 509techservices.ca. Hope you enjoy this interview. Welcome to the podcast, Justin Auger. Wait, is that how you say it? I should have asked that before I did that. <laughs> we should have should have verified that before, but yeah, you nailed it pretty good. Uh OJ is actually the French uh pronunciation. So growing up I heard a lot of people, especially refs from you know Montreal area and stuff, saying OJ, but yeah, Auger. Auger's right. Okay, cool. Uh, okay. so yeah, you're you're based in California right now. How's that like? What's it like with all the protests going on and COVID, uh, obviously? Yeah, it's interesting. You know, I I I've been seeing pictures and stuff. I I try and stay away, obviously. You know, still with the whole mass gatherings and stuff. Uh, I'm actually in uh, Newport Beach, oh, cool. so uh, we're pretty uh, sheltered out here. Um, so, I mean, I, I do my thing, you know, I, we're, we're in like a complex here, so we're, we're pretty sheltered. We go down to the beach on the weekends and stuff, but, uh, yeah, beautiful weather right now. So there's, there's not too many complaints. Cool. What's is, the, how's the difference from KW to California? Is it? <laughs> uh, yeah, it's different for sure. I mean, you get those, you know, typical LA people, you know, that you can, you know, all the social media stars and all that stuff. I mean, it's not like you're walking down the street seeing famous people left and right, right. but uh, you definitely just, it's just, it, it's a different vibe, you know, the West Coast vibe that they got going on out here. For sure. Mm. In and out and all that. I went there. Yeah, in and out. I, yeah, we were actually talking about picking that up last weekend. We didn't go, but <laughs> oh yeah, I, I think this weekend is going to be the weekend that we go have a little cheat meal. Oh, definitely. <laughs> have you actually seen anyone, any famous celebrities or anything? Um, I've seen, uh, I've been up in Hermosa beach and I think, um, Maria Sharapova lives there. The tennis oh, star. Perfect. Uh, yeah, that was all right. Um, <laughs> yeah, not bad. But, uh, I've seen her, uh, actually like not really too much. Like, honestly, like, I feel like out here, like <clears throat> there, it's not really like a big deal to be a star. Like everyone kind of just blends in and mm-hmm. you just yeah. kind of like do your thing, you know? Fair enough. Is it, is is, uh, is Newport Beach and Hermosa Beach, does it live up to its name in the hockey community? Yeah, definitely. I mean, like Hermosa Beach is like where all the, the Kings guys live. And I know like a lot of, uh, like I'm not, I don't really have any friends on the Ducks, but I know a lot of the Ducks players live out in like Newport Beach area because like where this is, it's only 15, 20 minutes from the Honda Center where they where they uh, play and practice. So um, yeah, it's, it's a good, there's a good hockey community there. I'm, I'm still buddies with some guys up in Hermosa beach. So you, like I, I go up there every once in a while and see those guys and stuff, but yeah, it's definitely uh it's a, it's a good community. And for uh, you know, like being a hockey player, it, it wouldn't be like Austin Matthews going out in Toronto and, you know, everyone would be asking to take pictures and shit with him, you know, in Hermosa beach, you know, Jeff, Jeff Carter can go walking down the street. No one really gives a shit who he is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Sure. Well, you, you've heard, you hear this, like, I'm sure Nate and Keith haven't, but I've listened to Spit and Chickles and you hear about Corey Perry and stuff just ripping it up at Newport Beach, oh, yeah. like when they're young. Yeah, so it's, exactly. cool. I mean, it's a great spot and it's it's somewhere where you can go out and like, have, like ho- hockey's not as big here. It's still big and stuff, but no one really cares if you're a hockey player out here. And, you know, I feel like they, you kind of like that because you can go out, you can, you know, go have some beers at the bar or whatever and not have to worry about someone pulling you know, taking a picture of you and posting on Instagram saying this guy's getting shit faced on a <laughs> Saturday night, and, yeah. you know, 
have to worry about that on a Sunday morning or something. So right, it's, it's way more laid back. Yeah, for sure. So let, let's uh, let's jump right into it now. Let's let's start in. Uh, I've sure you've seen our guests. We I, I'm a junior B player, and we've had junior B players on. We've had junior C players on from the PJHL, and you all used to play junior B at 16, and it's kind of cool to see someone who's playing professional now who's in all the spot that a, a bunch of my friends are and stuff like that. So what was, what was playing for the Siskins like? Oh, it was awesome. I mean, uh, I came out of my 15 year old year. Um, and I remember going to the first camp that they do, like after your 15 year old yeah, season the rookie camp and yeah, they do the rookie camp. And, uh, I remember them telling me they're like, yeah, uh, cause there's only two 16 year old spots at that time. Yeah. I don't know if that's changed since, um, no, it's still the same. Yeah, so they, they only do two 16-year-old spots. So uh, there was like a couple other prospects in the area. And uh, I remember them telling me like, yeah, we're not sure if we're going to use one of our two spots on you. Uh, feel free to talk to other teams and, you know, like make, you know, like see if they're interested. Uh, we'll see when the season rolls around if we're going to give you a release or whatever. Uh, we'll give you a release if we don't want to. But uh <clears throat> We'll, we'll see. So, uh, yeah, the summer went by, obviously that kind of like pissed me off. I was like, oh, you guys, you like, you don't want me like, so, you know, had a good summer working out training and stuff and went back to, uh, whatever camp they do before the season starts. And I must've had a good camp or whatever. Cause they called me in and they're like, yeah, we're keeping it. You know, like you're not going anywhere. And, uh, I think like at that, at that point I would have been, uh, drafted, uh, by Guelph, but, I went to Guelph and, you know, they, like, I think I was, what was I, a six rounder or something. So they already had their top three rounds signed and everything, you know, like right. most of the time, sixth rounders aren't playing their first year anyway. So I figured, you know, I'd be playing junior B that year anyway. So um, I loved it. I mean, it was honestly one of my most favorite uh, seasons of hockey played. I got to play with a lot of like good buddies I grew up with that I never got to play with before because they were different ages. So I had some like buddies I was really close with that were a year or two older than me from Waterloo. And that was the first time I really got to to play with them. And my buddy who lived uh, two doors down from me, we both played on the Siskins together. And like, like you guys, like we grew up, he was actually the one who got me into hockey and stuff. And, and we grew up together playing hockey our whole lives, but because he was a year older than me, never got to play to, together. So, mm. I mean, that was a fun experience and just being able to play hockey in Waterloo and, and the first time you're like kind of playing in like a big arena and, and there's like fans coming to watch you and stuff. Like you kind of, you kind of feel like the shit you're out there, you know, your chest is out, your, your chin's <laughs> up high and stuff. For sure. That, that's pretty cool too. As we, we had, um, I'm assuming you haven't heard of them, but uh, Ben McFarlane and Cooper Walker, and they're the exact same thing as you. Uh, I think they actually went fifth and sixth round to Guelph, both from Cambridge, obviously Scott Walker's Cooper Walker's dad. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cooper. Yeah. So they both, yeah, they both went to Guelph and they both did the same thing. Um, Cooper played for the Dutchman and McFarland played for Cambridge and then they both went to Guelph the next year. Yeah. That was right pretty cool to see that that's, that's your story too. And to where you are now, I'm sure they'll both be uh, pretty excited hearing this. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's something like back in the day, you know, I was pissed off about the OHL draft and, you know, everyone thinks that they should play as a 16 year old, but looking back at it, like that was probably one of my best development years because I went to the Siskins and I was playing, you know, 15, 20 minutes a night. And I think I had 20 goals that year and just the confidence that I built in that year. And, and like, that was my first year playing, being 16, playing against 20 year olds. So, I mean, just, just getting that confidence and not going straight to the OHL and, you know, playing two or three minutes a night, you know, even though I yeah. did that in, in the following years in Guelph, but <laughs> I'm sure we'll get to that part. Yeah. Yeah. Well, in, in most interviews, we do go through junior, like year by year. So we, we, we've had guys that you played on, but I think since you played professional and we, we want to move on to that, let's just talk about the last year. Obviously that's a big one. We've had, uh, we had Garrett McFadden on our podcast, which he yep. was healthy scratch, but he's on the team. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. What, like, what was that? You're like, our, like he, he even said like one of the best CHL teams ever. Yeah. Oh yeah. And I, I think it'll go down as that. I mean, we made some big trades throughout the year. 
Uh, we ac acquired uh, Kirby Reichel and Nick Ebert, who are both still playing professionally. Uh, I mean, like, if you go through our roster that year, we must – like, there's probably – like Robbie Fabry, Jason Dickinson, Tyler Bertuzzi, who are all in the NHL right now, Ben Harper, uh, like Matt Finn, who played professional, Scott Kosmachuk, uh, Zach Mitchell, uh, Ryan Horvat, who play, who's still playing professional. You know, like we probably had like over 50% of our team go, go pro after that year. And I mean, showing up to the rank of that year, it, we were expected to win every single game. You know, if we didn't sweep a weekend and win all three games, it was a letdown. I think I, I have to look back at our record, but I feel like we had like 50 wins and maybe just over 10 losses. Oh, wow. um, we were, we were like an all-star team. We were stacked. And I mean, that put me in because our team was so stacked. It put me in like a third, fourth line role in my 19 year old season, which was weird for me because I was drafted by the Kings by then. And uh, obviously I wanted to be playing more, but it was, uh, I remember, I remember th like thinking about it that year, like, you know, I could get traded to a different team and maybe play more or be on this team and have the chance to win an OHL championship, potentially a Memorial cup. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm happy with my decision. You know, I stuck it out with the guys that I'd been with for two years before that. And, uh, you know, it was, it was amazing. You know, one of the best feelings is ending the season, winning your last game of the season. And, 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 you know, if you ever get the chance to experience that and win a championship, like there's only, you know, 30 guys or 20 guys out of the entire league that get to finish the season off with a win. So uh, it was a great feeling. Yeah. I bet. And I'm sure it was like kind of run me through the, like the experience, like obviously you had uh great people like Harper and like, Bertuzzi, how was your like relationship with all those guys? Or, like, do you think that it kind of drove you to be a better team as a whole? Or, yeah, I mean, that, that's the thing. Like, you look back at it, and like, guys always say, like, you got you got great teams, and the, you know the chemistry and stuff, and like that that team was great. You know, like there was no bad eggs on our team. You know, like every everyone got along. You could go out like we were. You know, you go have some beers with the guys, whatever, and. uh everyone you know everyone shows up there's no one who's like kind of doing their own thing and and you know like I feel like that also just comes with winning you know like it just creates it's a good atmosphere in the room everyone's always happy the coaches are way happier when you're winning obviously yeah. and uh yeah I mean we had good leaders on our team good older guys I mean most of our team I want to say over half of our team was 19 or 20 years old so I mean you just get that old veteran team and it obviously just drives, you know, the younger guys to, to look up to the older guys and, you know, show up, put the work in and stuff. And it, uh, yeah, it was, it was an amazing experience. Now, right so after that, like after that amazing whole Guelph experience, you went, you got to play pro. Would you be able to talk us through your, the beginning of your pro career? Yeah. yeah. The For sure. Yeah. So transitioning, uh, that was my 19 year old season. Uh, I was drafted by LA the year before, um, going into my 20 year old year. I wasn't really sure. Cause I was still old enough to play in the OHL. I could have been an overager that year. Um, and I wasn't signed yet by the Kings. So another, you know, like I went in, had a good summer, good training, working out and everything. And I went into a uh, rookie camp with the Kings that year, had a good camp, had a good main camp. And, uh, then, you know, they said, we want to, uh, send you to Manchester. Uh, let's try and figure out a deal. You know, we want to sign you and get you playing there. And I was at that point, like, I, I still wasn't sure, you know, like I was pumped about the opportunity and everything. And I was like, but maybe another year of junior might be smart for me. Uh, luckily, you know, I, I talked to my family and stuff and made the decision, you know, like, let's sign, you know, I'm not going to turn down an entry level contract, obviously. So, we worked something out, got that finished. And, uh, yeah, I went to Manchester my first year. Um, that was an amazing experience too. Um, we had a great team, obviously. Uh, yeah, we, like we ended up winning the championship, uh, that year too. We, we went home, uh, with the Calder cup. Um, yeah, I don't know what, what else you guys want to know about that, that season. 
What was your uh, what was your like welcome to the pro moment? We've asked a bunch of our guys this, but do you do you have like one specific moment that you recall? That's tough. or something that was really cool for you, like your like one of the yeah. coolest experiences. Yeah, we try to get this out of everyone just so like we can like because we want to know ourselves, but also yeah. for the viewers, it's so cool to say like. I'm like what what was Zach Dalpy's like he went and someone dropped a bunch of money on dinner like nothing. He's like, Wow, I mean oh it's yeah. tap when Zach Dalpy realized he's like, I was supposed to get twenty two thousand dollars as a bonus and I only got ten thousand dollars. Oh uh, yeah, because you only get half your paycheck. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Like I honestly think one of the coolest experiences for me was some of the guys I got to play with throughout my career. Uh, my first year in Manchester, um, Mike Richards ended up getting sent down from the Kings. So he was there uh, living in, he actually lived in Boston at the Ritz and he would drive into Manchester for practices and games and stuff. And this is a guy who has won Stanley cups, you know, and you know, he's won everything from Olympic to world junior to Stanley cups to world championships, all this stuff. And he's just, you know, in the same locker room as you and, like, like you said, like putting money up on the board, like he'll, he'll throw a thousand bucks up on the board. And I mean, that's, he's making 10 times that in a day playing in the coast too. You know, he's not, he's not getting escrow. He's getting more of his paycheck. You know, he obviously wasn't happy to be there and the situation, but like I've played with guys like that. I got to play with uh, like Paul Bissonette for a couple of years in Ontario. Um, and just like like lining up like with those guys and you know you're just getting dressed looking around like oh that guy's got you know 300 nhl games like what's he doing here and like what am i doing in the same dressing room as this guy like i'm right. a i'm a 20 year old kid like i don't even have to shave my face yet <laughs> and these guys are you know grizzled nhl veterans you, we, you can't just pass over biz nasty that's it every viewer who listens to us that that's a pretty big deal for us you gotta you Got to tell some about or some stories or what he was like. Yeah, I mean, he was uh, – so he, he actually came that year in Manchester. He it, he started off in Portland, and I remember – I think he might have got released from Portland or something, and he knew our coach from back in the day or something, so so we brought him over. And, I mean, just just an amazing locker room guy, you know, like obviously listen to Spit and Chicklets, like you've heard his stories, you know, all that stuff. And – just a great addition to a team. And, you know, like you, like you always say, like the locker room guy, you know, the glue guy and everything. And, and he, he just lives up to that. You know, he's the guy who's always in the room talking, keeping the conversation going, cracking jokes, you know, like including guys and stuff. Um, and, and you really don't understand, you know, that, that guy cannot play a single game in a season and still have the biggest impact on a team that I've seen, you know, just from, you know, bringing the morale up in the room, you know, you have a tough loss and, and he comes in there and cracks a joke, makes everyone kind of feel better. You know, he'll, he'll joke with the coaching staff, you know, kind of lighten them up and, and all that stuff. Uh, you know, I, I can't, yeah, and, and that's something I get asked about a lot too, because a lot of my buddies from back home, all listen to the spitting chicklets too. And, and they're like, Oh, how's biz, you know, like what, and like they, they'd rather hear about biz than, you know, Mike Richards or, some other, oh, yeah. you know, NHL that got sent down, you know, they want to hear, they want to hear biz stories. Cool. Now you touched on, uh, the Calder Calder cup. Um, what was like winning that? And how crazy was that? Yeah. And it was crazy. Too. Um, yeah. Especially going from, uh, winning the championship, uh, when I was 19 in Guelph to the next year, winning the Calder cup when I was 20, it was like, wow, this is easy. I should just do this every year, you know? <laughs> But, uh, yeah, it was good. Uh, it, it was honestly like that year we were also like an all-star team. I'd, I'd have to look back at our record, but it was similar to the year before. We had a lot of good veterans on our team, and we just had a really good lineup. Um, we, we were helped with, you know, Mike Richards coming down from L.A. Uh, we had good older players who a lot of them now, you know, like Colin Miller, he's in the NHL. Jordan Wheel, um, uh, Andrew Bodner, Chucks overseas, just older guys like that who really drove the team. Um, 
I think we only lost three games in the entire playoffs uh, going into that. And it was, it was honestly the same thing. Like the entire year we were in first place uh, going into playoffs, you know, everyone expected to win a championship. You know, we knew we were there till June. We knew we were the favorites and, you know, if we didn't live up to that potential, then, you know, it was going to be a year gone to waste. So, um, I still remember when we won it, we were in Utica. Um, it was an away game and, uh, we, <clears throat> my family drove up obviously, you know, so that was pretty special to get to share it with them. And, uh, you know, just the feeling of, I think it might've been three, one or something with a couple minutes left in the game. And, and you just, you're sitting on the bench and you're like, holy shit, like this is going to happen, you know? And, if you get to experience that feeling where, you know, you win something and you jump off the bench, even though, even if it's, you know, like a spring league tournament or whatever, yeah. like a weekend tournament and you get that feeling of you get to jump off the bench and chuck your gloves in the air and rip your helmet off and go sell you with the boys and, you know, just jump in a big circle and hug everyone. Like it's something that you're going to remember for the rest of your life. You know, um, it was, it was special. And then, you know, it was, it was different because we won it on the road. So after that, we went back into the dressing room, you know, cracked champagne, had some beers, some cigars and stuff. All our family was down with us, uh, you know, just, just whooping it up in the dressing room. Like I remember coming in and they had all like the, the dressing room was all uh, plastic wrapped, like, like a Dexter room, you know, to, oh, yeah. to try yeah. to try and, keep like the mess minimal and the <laughs> cold tub was filled up with bud lights and stuff guys are jumping in the cold tub in their gear and shit like <laughs> it was crazy. it was crazy so then then yeah. we finish off the celebration you know we 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 hang out there for a couple hours with our families and stuff and uh we got to get back on the bus so uh we bus back to manchester i think it was i don't know maybe six or seven hours and and the whole time, you know, obviously we're, we're sitting in the back having beers and stuff. And I think we, we must've got back at, you know, 7 AM or something. And, uh, you know, there's three or 400 fans sitting in the parking lot waiting to greet us and they're cheering and we're just walking off where, you know, our eyes are <laughs> glazed over. We're all calling cabs. We're like, okay, let's, let's go home, get a couple hours of sleep. We'll regroup and do it all again tomorrow. Go to the patio, whatever. So it was, it was kind of a different experience. Like it, it would have been fun winning it at home and stuff, but just that I'll always remember that, that bus ride back afterwards where, mm -hmm. you know, it was just the boys sitting in the back with the cup, drinking out of the cup, pouring beers in the cup, you know, just, that was, that was probably one of the, the best bonding moments I've had with the team in my life. Yeah. it sounds pretty incredible. Definitely the most fun <laughs> I've had. On <laughs> Sorry for the stutter, but yeah. <laughs> Now, you kind of jokingly touched on it at the start before you told that awesome story, but you get, like, so for a, example, a good one is Tyler Sagan. He came into Boston his rookie year, won a cup. And you, do you, did you kind of get that false sense of, like, you know what, this isn't that, that hard to do? Like, because you're on such a stacked team. And he had the same thing. And then you hear him in interviews now. He's like, when I was 19, I thought, oh, like, we're going to be able to do this every single year. And then now he's like, I haven't won. Like, I haven't barely touched the playoffs since. Yeah. Like, did you ever get that sense? I mean, it it's hard going back to back years and winning. The hardest part is to just like kind of sit back and let it soak in, you know, and that, that's one thing, especially being 20 years old. I'm, you know, you're sitting there thinking like you have so many more years, uh, you're going to do it again. And you, you, it's especially when you're that young, it's hard to just sit there and look around and, you know, just be like, wow, this is, this is a hard thing to do and, you know, just let it sink in and let the feelings sink in. And yeah, definitely looking back, I probably should have, you know, now that I've played six years pro and I've, I've been in the playoffs every year, but the closest I've come is uh, the conference finals. So, I mean, even just getting back to that final situation that gives you the, the opportunity, you know, there's only, two out of 30 teams that get to that point, you know, and, and to be one of those teams is definitely, it's definitely a good feeling. And it's, it's definitely hard to do to be mm. one of the 40 players out of, you know, the hundreds or thousands or whatever that are in the league at a time to still be playing hockey in June when everyone else is back home golfing and hanging out with their buddies. Like it's, it's something that you don't, you definitely don't get to do very often. And it's something that, 
when it's happening, you really just have to, you know, let it, let it sink in and enjoy the moment. Mm -hmm. Now from where you were, what was the transition like to California from where you were playing pro? Uh, it was honestly like, I, I loved it. I mean, obviously you get to come out to California. Uh, the reason they did it was because having a, uh, minor league team on the East coast and your NHL team on the West coast with a three hour time change and a six hour flight doesn't really make sense. Mm -hmm. Uh, if you need to call up someone for the next day or that night, you know, like guys were missing their call ups, you know, the snowstorms and yeah. planning yeah. cancellations. They weren't getting to LA. They missed their call up. So that's that's why they brought, you know, the AHL out to California and those now I think there's six or seven teams and they're bringing in a new uh the Henderson Knights or whatever. And I think there's they're talking about Palm Springs and stuff. So oh, I mean you have all these NHL teams so nice. out here. Yeah. I know. <laughs> Palm Springs. Like, uh, yeah, Palm Springs, beautiful. Oh, yeah. And, uh, good golf, good golf, good weather. Like, <laughs> um, it was just, it was kind of like they just told us, you know, um, the year before we went to uh, camp in LA and then they were like, okay, we're going to fly out to Manchester now, go to camp there. Whereas the next year, the only difference was, uh, you know, go to LA, uh, camp in LA. And then instead of flying to Manchester, we just took a bus down to Ontario and they set us up in a hotel and, you know, they're like, well, this is where you're playing this year. So, I mean, there wasn't, wasn't a huge transition other than it was a new city and a new state. But, uh, I, I really don't think too many guys had many complaints coming from New Hampshire yeah. to California. Yeah. Yeah. Not How anymore. awesome is it? Like living, like you said, you're at Newport right now. Like you control yeah. and flip-flops like <laughs> yeah so like newport i don't know if you guys know that like newport's beach city basically uh where ontario was it's about an hour inland oh, so okay. like you get all the nice weather and stuff but you're not really near the beach uh ontario's all right like it's it's more like just living communities there's not really much nightlife and stuff uh, so from that perspective, you know, being a 21, 22 year old and you want to go to the bars and stuff, it's not a great spot, but I mean, that can also be a good thing when you're trying to stay out of trouble, but, yeah. uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, guys love it, you know, like all year round, you can go to the rink and shorts and flip flops and you don't have to, you know, like you get those days when you're in the winter and, you know, like I, I did it for my whole life up until I was 20. You know, like you wake up and it's gray outside and it's gray all day. And, you know, it just, it almost just helps with that, like mental. Yeah, it can change your mood. Mental, yeah, sure. exactly. You know, it just changes your mood when you come outside after practice at one o'clock in the afternoon and the sun's shining and you're like, oh, should I go sit by the pool today? Like it's December. Yeah. All my friends back home are sending me Snapchats <laughs> of the snowstorm and I'm going out to the pool. There's, there's not too many complaints there. Yeah. Point. You big golfer at all? Have you uh, go had a chance to golf in California? Or? Yeah, I uh, I'm not. I wouldn't say I'm a huge golfer. I enjoy going out and drinking beers and hanging out with my buddies on the course. I don't. Uh, I very rarely keep score when I golf. I like uh, I like going out and playing best ball. Yeah, but uh, like I yeah I love golf and there was a couple courses that we'd get hooked up on and uh, you know I mean. Yeah, that's what it is. I mean, you go out after practice and play nine or you play 18 or whatever you get. It. The tough part is, is uh, what most people don't uh, think of is like the sun still goes down at four or five o'clock in, in the winter here. Oh, okay. So, I mean, we get out of the rink at one or two o'clock and you only really get a couple hours after that until the sun goes down. So it is kind of hard to play, but uh, like, yeah, there's, a, I played the other week out here and I mean, there's tons of, amazing courses to play and because there because there is so many like you can you can find if you want to like really reasonably priced golf yeah mm -hmm. cool. uh so now now's the perfect time we gotta hop into your two games with the kings obviously for yeah, sure what was that like playing the nhl yeah hard to even ask you know what to ask <laughs> it was uh it was pretty surreal you know um that was another another time where you know, it, that, that was when I like, I was like, I really, you know, you really just got to let it sink in. Cause you, you know, like, you, like I got my cup of coffee 
be in the NHL, what they call it, you know. Um, I played two games. Uh, you know, one thing is, is I can always say that I've been there and I've played. Uh, it was it was crazy. You know, I, I still remember I was in uh, – I think I was in a target or something and I, and I get a phone call from uh, the assistant GM. Um, I'm like, Oh shit, am I, am I in trouble or what's going on here? And uh, I don't have service in the, in the store. So I'm like sprinting out of the store to take this call and I pick up the phone and he's like, Oh, you ready? I was like, ready for what? <laughs> and he goes, uh, we're bringing you up. Uh, you're going to play tomorrow night. And I was like, Holy shit. Wow. Like, uh, really and he's like yeah he's like pack your shit and drive up here like luckily we were in ontario so i i remember uh freaking out you know like obviously first thing i did was call my parents i was like hey like you guys gotta hop on a flight you know i'm i'm playing like they were obviously pumped for me so uh that day i drove out uh, i think we practiced that afternoon or maybe then it might have been two days after so the next day my parents flew out. Like I got them a flight and stuff. Cause I was like, obviously I want them there. My uh, girlfriend flew out from wherever she was. So luckily they were able to, to come and to see my first game. Um, I remember my first shift. So like, I, I didn't really, you like, you don't know what to expect, right? You're, you're walking out there and your my hands are shaking and shit. Like, I'm like, I, you know, like you walk out and there's 10,000 people in the stands and, you're playing with all these NHL players. And my first game was against uh, Montreal Canadiens. And uh, I remember it was a neutral zone face-off. And uh, I hop out there for my first shift. And uh, our centerman, I'm pretty sure it was uh, Adrian Kempe, wins the draw back to the left D. They go D to D, and I kind of fan out on the right winger. And I fan out for the pass. He passes it to me. And I put the puck on my backhand to go chip it in. And I chipped it right into Montreal's bench. And I was oh, like, oh, fuck. <laughs> that didn't look good. <laughs> so that was my, I mean, you know, and then the guys on the bench, obviously, they think I'm just some scrub that got called up. They start chirping me, and I'm just like, God, oh, guys, no. give me a break. Like, I, could barely, I could barely breathe right now. My, <laughs> my hands are shaking and everything. Like, So that was, my, that was my welcome to the NHL moment when I first played. <laughs> Touched the puck and shot it right into their bench. <laughs> where, where, so cool. What's that? Where was the game? Staples Center? Or were you in yeah, Staples Center. So I, I played my first game uh, at the Staples Center. And then uh, the, what was really cool is uh, right after that, uh, we were going on uh, the like northern road trip. So uh, my second game was in Columbus. We flew up to Columbus. So I got to experience, you know, like the – pj the you know steak on the plane and sushi after and you know like that was crazy like you know you you're not going through you know you're you're coming to the airport you're parking there and you're walking right on the plane they're taking you from one spot to another um so yeah we went up to columbus uh, i played my second game in columbus which was also really cool and uh so I, I didn't play another game after that but i stayed with the team on the on the road trip a couple healthy scratches but you know at that point i was just happy to be there and collect the paychecks and uh i got to go uh i watched in toronto uh ottawa and montreal so it was really cool for me uh some of my buddies came to the game in toronto um would have loved to be able to play that game yeah. that would have been honestly one of the coolest things in my life for sure um you know it sucks but you know it was still cool you know my buddies came and saw me and just to be around the team and stuff and uh then we went to toronto we took the train to um ottawa i want to say stayed there and then we went to montreal and you know just to, just to experience that lifestyle i was up there for two weeks i got to play two games and it's something that i'll truly remember for the rest of my life and just yeah. an experience that you really can't trade for anything yeah, like I, I read the, the like you're the only. Uh, I mean, sorry, first, uh, it has to be a five star hotel for yeah. NHL teams. Well, I, I know, like it's crazy too because you're staying in like the Ritz Carltons or you know, like whatever, all these like hotels, and then you get your own hotel room. And like in the minors, obviously, you're not getting your ho own hotel room. Like they're jamming a couple guys in there, and. Uh, I honestly like that, you know, like I like having someone else in the room when I'm by myself, I'm just like 
nervous the whole time I'm going to be late for meeting or practice. Like yeah. I need someone to wake yeah. up and I don't want to be on my own. So like I had a couple of buddies and we'd always be like texting like, Hey, like, what time is this again? You know, you up like all this shit. But yeah, it was, uh, I, the rule is I think once you get off your entry level contract, then they have to give you your own room. So I was like, I mean, I wasn't going to go ask for another room. I was pretty, I was pretty uh, lucky that way. I mean, I was, so that was my fourth, fourth year, I think. So that was uh, my first year off my entry level. So, I mean, the one, the one bad thing is uh, they pay for your parents' flight. If you're on your entry level, they pay for all that. So I had to buy my parents' flight and stuff, but I was more than happy to oh, yeah. pay for that and get them out there. But I got, I ended up getting my own hotel room. So that was the old catch 22. <laughs> That's mm. cool. Right. Yeah, that's that's such a cool thing. Like, we've only had I think this is the second your second guest who's had that NHL experience. So it's so cool to hear, like, what the real pro life is like. Yeah, yeah, it was amazing. I mean, I've I've experienced it before. That I experienced it like going to camp and stuff. Like we'd have you know you you go to uh, your NHL camps and stuff, and you had. Uh, um exhibition games so like i'd i'd taken the private jet to uh like arizona and stuff to play exhibition games in camp and stuff and uh like i think vegas the first year they were there and like so you like i've I've experienced that that part of it before but just the part of it you know it's completely different when you get into the regular season and it's not like the training camp rosters anymore you know you get you're playing against like all the full-time nhlers and you just you just see those guys out there and uh, uh, it's crazy i'm yeah i'm yeah. I have no no way to put it into words you know yeah, for sure so, now with, oh yeah go ahead uh, go ahead then obviously the, the transition of florida in the 18 19 season I, I, I we keep asking what everything was like i guess but um it's our way of kind of just trying to understand everything obviously you get you get you find out that you're gonna go down which sucks but what's hockey like in florida oh uh, it's pretty awesome you know i wasn't sure what was gonna happen after that last season you know they decided not to qualify me and uh so you know i was kind of waiting around for a deal not much happening um so i was sitting there in september and my agent was like why don't you just go go down there until we can find something for you um you know, it, it's not going to be any benefit to you to sit at home. Like I was uh, skating with the Waterloo Warriors and stuff, uh, just just trying to stay in shape. And and he basically said, you know, it's not going to be any benefit for you to sit at home and and have no one watching you. So like, let's go down to Florida. Like it's it's hands down the best place to play in the coast. Yeah, uh, and, and you get to live in Florida. Yeah, you know. So I, I remember going down there and. Uh, my uh i was there for maybe two weeks or whatever and i'm like i'm loving it you know it's it's florida where we're right by like fort myers uh naples area so it's super nice there's a university there good nightlife good restaurants you know just like i mean like naples is like one of the richest places in the u.s like there's so much money there and i remember uh we went uh my second or third week there on we had a sunday off and we went to uh, the beach um, and it's Fort Myers beach and the bar is called Lonnie Kai. And uh, it's, it's one of the places in Florida that like every year always gets super crazy for spring break. And uh, it obviously wasn't spring break time at that point, but we went there and, you know, they do water balloon toss competitions and, you know, limbo and all that stuff. And you're sitting there drinking strawberry daiquiris and, you know, pina coladas on the beach and i'm just like looking around like i i kind of like this place you know i could yeah. i could see myself standing here for a little bit and two years later i've, I've played there for two years so I've, I've been back to that beach m- many a times that's awesome <laughs> yeah it's definitely a lot better than playing up in like massachusetts or whatever like yeah i mean it's it's just such an attraction point and that's that's why like those teams down there always do so well like the you know where i played in florida like again this year which sucked with with everything getting canceled and stuff we were our last 25 games we were 22 two and two we were in first place and you know it was one of those years where we were expected to go on a long run and potentially you know win another cup so with everything getting canceled it was pretty shit but um you know it's it's a 
like those, like I said, like those places attract so many people because it's like, you can go and live in the warm and a team, like you hear horror stories about the East coast, about, you know, teams, you know, not treating players well, like yada, yada, something came out about like someone getting put on the IR this year. I remember that didn't even know he was on the IR and just like there is, you know, you just hear some shady stories and, and that, and just to have a team that luckily I've never had to experience that on like a, a financially non well off team. Florida is one of the grade A spots that you can go and play in the coast and the weather is just a plus on top of it. Yeah. What are, what are the fans like? Sorry, I keep cutting you off, Keith. But oh, <laughs> no, no, okay. I keep on cutting Keith off. Keith's always right about to say something and I go. <laughs> it's always, <laughs> we're going to say the same thing either way, so it's all good. Oh, okay. So that's, as long as you get the questions yeah. out, I'm happy yeah. to answer them. You, 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 like, we heard Biz talking about like how there's like the hardcore East Coast fans like hardcore are you have you experienced that at all i mean it's actually crazy because of how bad the fans are that like the panthers get like like there's like people say you know it's yeah. less expensive to fly down to florida and go watch a panthers game watch the leafs play the panthers than it is to go to you know watch a leaf game in toronto at the acc or whatever right <laughs> so like like weirdly enough they don't get many fans but the East coast, like where we are, it's almost like we have like a small, like die hard group of fans, you know, like the, maybe like a, th- say a thousand or so 2000, like season ticket holder, die hard yeah. fans that, you know, are bringing us like snacks and stuff for our, our bus trips. And, you know, we have fan events and stuff and they're always coming out buying jerseys and stuff. And so like you have like your core base of fans that, you know, love the team, love the guys and then at the beginning of the season, it's not as filled out, but because like Florida is such a destination for snowbirds, yeah. as soon as, you know, uh, November to April ish rolls around, like it's usually packed every game because all the snowbirds are down there. Like the Canadians yeah. are down living in Fort Myers, Naples area, and they want to go watch hockey instead of paying, you know, a couple hundred bucks or whatever to go, watch the Tampa Bay lightning or the uh, Florida Panthers or whatever. Like they, they can come watch a coast game for 20 bucks. So, yeah, I mean, the fan base is actually, is actually pretty great down there. You know, I think we're one of the highest averaging fan bases in the coast. I want to say around 5,000. And I think that's around what our arena holds. So um, yeah, it's, it's actually like sweet atmosphere. Cause it's kind of, it's like, if you've been to the Sleeman center, like it's just one small bowl. Yep. And uh, so if you get that packed, it's almost like the fans are on top of you. And like, mm-hmm. it's not like playing in like a 10,000 seat arena and you only put 3000 in it. Like it feels empty. This, they like, they pack it and you know, you're playing in front of a loud barn. And I mean, that's, that's one of the best feelings as obviously as a player of any sport to play in front of a bunch of people that are loud and loving the game. For sure. Yeah. And I think kind of wrap things up. What's kind of, next for you in the future like I know you said your season kind of got canceled and obviously that's a shame because of COVID but what's kind of next for you like your next plans and goals for the future yeah I'm not sure uh, um obviously the hockey season like everything's kind of a shit show right now you know with uh the NHL talking about starting up and then they're talking about next season not starting till January or something uh there's been no real plans with the coast yet I think that kind of is going to be dependent on, uh, you know, fans, if they can get fans into the arena and stuff, because they're not going to be able to, you know, financially support teams if they don't have fans paying for tickets. Uh, So that's, I mean, it's kind of like a waiting game right now, hockey wise. Um, This year I I've been doing my uh, firefighter certification. Um, So I've been doing that for the past four months online and uh, hopefully soon they'll be able to open up the uh, practical. It's actually in Toronto. So then uh, I'll be able to do that. So that's something I'm, I'm kind of looking into for uh, the future. You know, my dad was a firefighter for 30 years and it's just something I've always been drawn to. And uh, it's, I mean, a lot of hockey players, you know, progress out of hockey into something like firefighting because it's a lot of the same things, you know, with the, the companionship, the leadership, the, you know, being around the guys and the, you know, just working as a team, all that kind of stuff. So 
Um, I don't know when that'll happen with whether it's within the next few years or so. Um, for now, I'm just kind of training as much as I can with no gyms being open. You know, it's the going for runs and doing YouTube workouts and yeah, exactly. Pilates, whatever <laughs> yoga, whatever you can do right now. It's kind of tough. Like my girlfriend has two seven pound dumbbells and that's, that's about all I can do for a workout right now. You, you can only curl seven pound dumbbells so many times. <laughs> I know. So, I mean, right now it's just staying in shape, uh, getting ready for whenever they kind of give us a heads up on what's going to happen with the next season. Well, uh, yeah. And I got one more, I got one more quick key, but <laughs> how, how's, uh, how's it, how, how have you been doing with obviously, the East Coast, like like you see, Spinchikos doing the East Coast uh, player relief fund, and uh, I'm pretty like you guys aren't getting paid, are you? Yeah, so we stopped getting paid on whenever the season got canceled. I think it was March 14th. They they stopped our paychecks. So yeah, I mean that was that was a huge help. Uh, obviously, like something totally unexpected. Uh, you know, you never really expect expect something like that. You know, it was an awesome thing that you know, biz and spit and chiclets kind of put together and just getting that sort of funding. So, I mean, it, it really just helps out guys. Like there's guys obviously in tough situations, you know, whether they have families or kids or, yeah. uh, you know, we basically lost out on, on I want to say at least a month's pay. So, I mean, a few thousand dollars that, that everyone lost out on because they cut the season short. So, I mean, guys that were expecting that money or had that money, you know, it could have been tied up in diapers for their kids or rent for whatever, just like the, the extra, you know, a few hundred bucks that they're able to get that and spread it out throughout the guys who, who aren't getting paid for the next couple months was just a huge help for us. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. That's uh, you've, you've been amazing. You've had some really insane stories to tell. So we really appreciate you coming on the show and yeah, we hope you all the best with everything in the future. Yeah, sounds good. Thanks for having me. Hopefully, you guys uh, keep building this podcast, and maybe we'll have uh, we'll have a returning in a year and see uh, see how everything's doing. For sure. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Right on. Good luck, guys, and uh, keep it going. Hope, uh, hope the best for you guys all in the podcast and everything. Thank you as well.